So you've already completed Ishopanishad and Nectar of Instruction. Okay? How many, how many people have we got? Fourteen. Yeah? Hare Krishna. Now, okay, so let me just recite some prayers before we begin. Omma Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so everybody hearing okay? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Well, some people here. I know some of you are a bit far away, right? Some people are in uh, Europe or America or South America. So transmission may be a problem. Anyway, welcome everyone to Bhakti Shastri course and we are going to begin the Bhagavad Gita today. Right, you've already completed. Have you done all your coursework for the first, for the Ishopanishad and the Nectar of Instruction? Did you write your essay? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes? good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to share the screen and we'll, I have a PowerPoint presentation for you to look at and uh, make it a bit easier. Let's see, screen sharing. Oh no, wrong one. <laughs> Are you able to see this? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, <laughs> wrong one, Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> I'm on Bhakti by Bhav. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Let's see.
Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are you able to see this PowerPoint? No manager. No? Okay, wait, I have to put the screen sharing again. Can you see it now? Yes, Maharaj, but only the menu. Oh. <laughs> Only the menu. That's no good.
Krishna. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, Maharaj, we can see your this lesson one, uh, two, three, and... The no, time. you're not seeing the PowerPoint yet, huh? You're not going yes. to... Yes. Can you see PowerPoint now? No, Maharaj. Uh, it is uh, earlier. It is like uh, earlier. It... Oh, Krishna. Okay, then I'll, I'm going to have to leave the meeting and come back in. The PowerPoint is not coming up. Uh, difficult to share. I want to show the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So, screen sharing, right? Yes. Host, what is disabled participants screen sharing? Host disabled. Did you you're, do that? You are the co-host, Maharaj. Huh? You are the co-host. What do I need to do? I want to show, share the screen. Okay, let me just... Host disabled. Participants. Krishna Gurudev. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Maybe can you mail me the PowerPoint and then I can share my screen? Well, ju me. just a minute, let me try again one more time. Mm. 
good. Why is it like this? Where's the documents? How do I share the, the PowerPoint? Huh? The PowerPoint is in here. Here's the option like you when you press on the click on share screen. Share screen. There is one. Yes. So where is the lesson you want to show? It's here, this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, click on that PPT. You got it now, Archana? Can you see it? Same, Gurudev. Can I see like PowerPoint? Can I see? Can see lesson one, lesson two. I don't know. Why does so? Maybe I'll give you the. You take it and you put it on your thing and share the screen. Okay. From your side, huh? You take it to your room. Do you remember which one it is? Lesson 1, um, Unit 1, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, Lesson 1, 1.
So we can see uh, PPT now. Okay, now we got it, huh? We can see the PPT now, Maharaj. Okay, at last we got it. Okay, we're in business. Okay. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, can you see the PPT now on screen Maharaj? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. So let's go. Sorry about all this. Get started here. Uh, let's see. So, Yagna Prabhu, yes, Yagna Prabhu, you have to, you have to move the PowerPoints for me. Can we open the PowerPoints, Yagna? Hare Krishna, can you go ahead? Go back. Go back to the beginning. Unit aim, right. Unit aim, okay, here we go. Unit one, Dharma and Bhagavad Gita, lesson one, Bhagavad Gita as it is. Go ahead. Next slide. Unit aim. This unit primarily aims to deepen students' understanding of the relationship between Varnashram Dharma and Krishna Consciousness. This topic, essential to understanding of Bhakti Shastra, is introduced in the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita, Dharma Kshetre, and continues to the 18th chapter, wherein Krishna conducts his discussion on the principles of religion. Dharma Samvadam, Dharmyam Samvadam, that means the religious conversation mentioned in the 18th chapter, that anyone who studies this uh, religious conversation worships Lord Krishna with intelligence, mentioned in the 18th chapter. Okay, so this is the aim of the, the unit, better understanding of the relationship between Varnashram Dharma and Krishna Consciousness. Go ahead. Gita Mahatmya, probably you know the Gita Mahatmya, the glorification of the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada includes it in his uh, introduction to the Bhagavad Gita. At the end of the introduction, Prabhupada adds on some of the verses from the Gita Mahatmya. Mala Nirma, oh, oh, the fonts are not correct here. I was using, an, he's put it in another computer, so the fonts were for an Apple computer, he's using another computer. Go ahead, I won't be able to chant this without seeing the proper fonts. 
One may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water, but if one takes a bath even once in the sacred Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. Go ahead. Go ahead. One need only attentively and regularly hear and read Bhagavad Gita. One need not read any other Vedic literature because it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic literatures. So this is Gita Mahatmya, glorification. And Sarva Panishad Ogavo, Dokta Gopalanandana, Parto Vatsa Sadir Bhokta, Duktam Gita Mritam Mahat. That's a well known verse from the Gita Mahatmya. Right? The Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, is the essence of all the Upanishads. It's just like a cow. Lord Krishna, who is famous as a cow, or boy is milking the cow. Arjuna is just like a calf. And learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita. Go ahead. Okay, here we have Srila Prabhupada. And so we want to begin with a little exercise for you. Go back. Go back. Keep it on this slide. We have a little exercise for you. We want you to look through your preface. I assume you all have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita there, either soft or hard copy. But look through the preface, Srila Prabhupada's preface, and pick out some aspects of Prabhupada's moon admission which are revealed there in the preface. So we'll be a bit late today. We had a late start, so we'll have to keep the class going a bit longer. Sorry about that, but just take five minutes to look over the preface and see if you can pick out some aspects of Prabhupada's mood and mission, which is there in the preface. Everyone's clear what you have to do? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Krishna Maharaj, yes. my computer was totally off just now, so I didn't get to hear exactly what you were saying. Okay, so we're asking devotees to do a little exercise here. We want you to look through the preface, Srila Prabhupada's preface of the Bhagavad Gita, and see if you can pick out some aspects of Prabhupada's mood and mission, which are revealed there in his preface. Thank you very much.
Maybe when you come up with some points, you can give them, you can speak them out. You can offer, raise your hand and we can call on you. We can hear. Any points you come up with? Yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dada yeah. Pranam. Uh -huh. uh, I have one point from the preface that uh, regards to the mood and mission of Sri Prabhupada. Yes. Uh, in this, it is mentioned that uh, it is that Bhagavad Gita is a book of knowledge with full parampara explanation in order to establish the Krishna consciousness movement more soundly and progressively. That's why Sri Prabhupada wrote uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita as well as in every language so that everyone can take advantage of this uh, book and uh, make their life successful. So this would be mission rather than yes. mood, right? Yes, Maharaj. This would be mission to present Bhagavad Gita for who? Yes, Madhuji, can you summarize it a little bit? Yes, Maharaji. Yeah, I was saying that uh, Sri Prabhupada wrote Srimad Bhagavad Gita in every language so that everyone can get advantage of that, uh, not even Indians, uh, to all the uh, society, to all, all over the world. That was the mission. Okay, to, so, so to present the Bhagavad Gita as it is, right? Yes, yes Maharaji. To the world. Okay. So that's one point of Prabhupada's mission. Another? Saki, Saki Harani Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So in the second paragraph, um, also uh, Prabhupada writes that a lot of, uh, you know, parents and grandparents of the American devotees came and thanked him, but, but he kind of gave all the credit to Lord Krishna himself and his spiritual master. So that was his mood to give everything uh, to the back to the discipline succession. Okay, so humility. He gives the credit to Guru and Krishna. Okay, that's the mood. Yes, some more? Radha Mahagopi Mataji. Krishna Maharaj, again, uh, I think Mataji had mentioned, so Prabhupada says uh, that this movement uh, was actually the father of the movement is Lord Krishna himself, and he gives credit to his uh, Guru Maharaj. And uh, it says that, and then he goes on to say that uh, it it he has presented this mission of the supreme personality of God at Krishna, and he is presenting the will of Krishna without any adulteration. Okay, so. Uh, presenting the will of Krishna without uh, adulteration, yeah, the, the purity of the Krishna conscious philosophy. Kashyap Muni Prabhu. I feel that there is a mood of compassion in Siddha Prabhupada when he is saying that like it was it is meant for everybody like that he wanted to bring it out to everybody in, in, in general okay so, yeah, that compassion some com yes compassion is there that's the mood mm -hmm. there is no more hand raised Maharaj. What is his mood? Yeah, the mood, the, the mood was, you know, if even one person could be delivered, then the book would be a success. Right? Prof. This is some hand raised, Maharaj. Yes? Abhay Mahajan Prabhu. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Prabhupada actually, uh, wanted to present Krishna's will and not, and not that of any mundane person. Uh, so 
that is i think uh, one of the core uh, word of shila prabhupada present krishna's will and not and not what uh, any uh, mundane person any materialistic person not any ordinary material philosophy but the actual teachings of lord krishna the will of krishna yes that he wants to present the Bhagavad Gita as it is, in the will of Krishna. Uh-huh. Bharat Prabhu. Mm, Hare Krishna Maharaji, that was Pranam. So like, uh, I would like to highlight like uh, Prabhupada went to America, outside of India, to fulfill its Guru Maharaj desire, to spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Like it was a desire of his Guru Maharaj, to propagate the Krishna consciousness uh, around the world. So he followed the instructions of his Guru Maharaj, Prabhupada Ji. And also Prabhupada Ji want to connect Krishna to everyone, to distribute the love of Godhead with uh, each and every people around the world. So he did it mm, to the mercy of his Guru Maharaj and other Vaishnavas. Uh -huh. Yes. What about ISKCON? Uh, uh, Prabhupada just established his cone for that purpose. What? To make it realistic, he established his cone. To make it what? Realistic among the people so that they can come and perform their activities. There is a, should be one place where they can contribute, assemble together and perform the devotional service. Yes, right. And so the Bhagavad Gita is teaching about the performance of devotional service and Prabhupada established the ISKCON society to show how the activities of Bhagavad Gita can be performed. And the Bhagavad Gita supports the activities of ISKCON. It shows that the, whatever the devotees are doing in ISKCON is authorized from the teachings of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Right? Yes, yes, Maharaj. So, yes. Radhika Mahabhavi Mataji. Um, I think we can also say that um, it was his mission to show everybody that we are all the servants of Krishna and that unless we serve him, we will, uh, uh, we will have to serve, we will be under illusion and have to serve the three modes of nature and be under the illusion. So that's a philosophical point. And certainly Prabhupada was teaching the Vaishnava philosophy to everyone. Prabhupada's mission was to educate people in the Vaishnava philosophy that we're under the control of the material nature and we act in, under the influence of the material energy but actually we're spiritual beings. So this is something of the Vaishnava philosophy. Yes? Anything else about relating uh, the Bhagavad Gita with ISKCON? Avna Mataji. Hare Krishna uh, Maharaji, Dhanvat Pranam. Uh, I also want to add this point, point that uh, there was also a mission regarding to, uh, to follow the disciplic succession that uh, like uh, Arjun follow, uh, take uh, principles from uh, Lord Krishna that uh, how one should serve his spiritual master and follow the instructions set by him. Similarly, in the same way, we have to follow uh, our spiritual master, the instructions they have given to us. So that was a specific mood, uh, just like Sri Prabhupada followed the instructions of his spiritual master. So the disciplic succession chain is going on, so we have to follow the instructions. The main message is also this one also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we should be convinced of the importance of following the orders of the spiritual master. We should be determined. And we should be uncompromising. Srila Prabhupada displayed these qualities. He didn't compromise. 
followed strictly the instructions of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita and the instructions given by his guru. All right. So, Prabhupada also explains, you know, by presenting the Bhagavad Gita with the word for word translation and the verse by verse commentaries, then it makes it very uh, helpful for people to actually understand the message of the Bhagavad Gita. And then Prabhupada didn't, didn't just simply write books, but he established also the ISKCON society, because there's a direct relationship there between the books and the society. That the society represent the teachings of the books. Whatever is mentioned there in the books, then these things are put into practice within the ISKCON society. All right? Is this clear to everyone? Any questions about Prabhupada's mood and mission? Okay, then we'll go ahead. Yagna Prabhu, can you go to the next slide now? Yeah. Okay. Some quotes here from Prabhupada, from his preface. Our only purpose is to present this Bhagavad Gita as it is, in order to guide the conditioned student to the same purpose for which Krishna descends to this planet once in a day of Brahma. Instead of satisfying his own personal material senses, he has to satisfy the senses of the Lord. That is the highest perfection of life. The Lord wants this, and he demands it. One has to understand this central point of Bhagavad Gita. Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching the whole world this central point. Right? What's the central point? Do you remember? What's the central point? Our Krishna consciousness movement is teaching the whole world this central point. Lord Krishna is the center of every activity we perform in our life. Yes, we have to satisfy the senses of Krishna. Not our own senses, but satisfy the senses of Krishna. This is the central point of the Bhagavad Gita, and our Krishna consciousness movement teaches this to the whole world by the example of the devotees. All right, we'll go ahead. Mood and mission. To help students understand and appreciate the mood and mission of Srila Prabhupada and to perpetuate that understanding within the ISKCON society. So as we go through Prabhupada's purports, don't go so fast, Yagna Prabhu, please, I'm not ready yet. As we go through Prabhupada's purports, we will see different places where Prabhupada brings out more his mood and mission. And we will point out to you, it's also good you make a note of these different places where Prabhupada is particularly bringing out the, the mood and mission of our ISKCON society and of his own writings and of his own books. They have a particular mood and mission, and we want to be able to recognize these points and appreciate them. So this is one of the 
aims here in Bhakti Shastri course. All right, Yagya Prabhu, next slide. So beginning the first verse of Bhagavad Gita, well-known verse, Dharma Kshetri Kuru Kshetri Samaveta Iyutsavaha Mama Ka Pandavas Jaiva Kimma Kurvata Sanjaya. So Krishna is speaking, or the first verse is spoken, Dhritarashtra, he's asking a question, right? And he begins, Dharma Kshetri Kuru Kshetri. Now sometimes people are surprised and they question, is Kurukshetra a Dharmakshetra? Is it, what is, is, it, is it really Kurukshetra? What's so dharmic about Kurukshetra? <laughs> sometimes people don't appreciate that Kurukshetra is a place of Dharma. Dharmakshetra, a field, Shetra is a field and Dharma, religious activities. So, Kurukshetra was selected as the place of the battle. And we want to understand that, first of all, that Kurukshetra is not some fictitious place, but it's an actual place, it's a real place on the map. There's a railway station there, you can go there, you can visit Kurukshetra even today. And you can see also uh, some of the tributes which are there in memory of the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita 5,000 years ago. So Prabhupada was concerned because there, there are some commentators on Bhagavad Gita and they try to say things like, oh, Kurukshetra, it doesn't mean really Kurukshetra, it doesn't mean that place on the map. Kurukshetra means the body, and the Pandavas mean the senses. And they try, in this way, they try to give some other meaning to the actual texts of the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada was very, he didn't like this at all, it's very wrong. And we should understand that Kurukshetra is not the body, but Kurukshetra is actually the place where the Kauravas and the Pandavas came to settle their dispute. And Kurukshetra is a Dharmakshetra. It's been a, it's been a place of Dharma for many, many millions of years. For, for many millions of years, great sages have come there and done penance and did austerities there. So it was selected as a place of battle to settle the argument between the two sides, the Pandavas and the Kauravas. So the, the first verse spoken by Dhritarashtra reveals the nature of Dhritarashtra, that he's not only blind materially, but he's also blind spiritually. And he makes the point, he distinguishes between his sons and the sons of Pandu. Mamaka Pandavas Chaiva Kim Akurvata Sanjaya. What did my sons and the sons of Pandu do? being desirous to fight. So this is the wrong mood. Dhritarashtra has the wrong mood, that his mood is to distinguish between his sons and the sons of Pandu. Now the, the Pandavas have no father. Pandu was their father and Pandu expired. He left the world and the Pandavas were meant to be in the care of Dhritarashtra. And Dhritarashtra, of course, he has his own sons, he has a hundred sons, but he makes distinction between his sons and the Pandavas. He doesn't think we're all one family, but he separated them. So this is the problem. This is the situation that Maharaj Dhritarashtra is in the bodily concept of life 
and he wants to distinguish between his sons and the sons of Pandu. So he's concerned, he's putting this question, he's asking a question to Sanjaya. Sanjaya is his secretary and he wants to know what did they do there. Sanjaya is, uh, Dhritarashtra is concerned that maybe that they've come to this Dharmakshitra, this holy place, maybe it will influence them. Maybe they're not going to fight. This was Dhritarashtra's doubt. Well, in some ways he was hoping that maybe when the Pandavas come there, that they will decide they don't want to fight. And they'll just give up and they'll just go away. And they'll just go off and we'll forget all about them. Dhritarashtra was hoping like that, but he was also a bit worried. He thought, maybe my own sons will be influenced by the Dharmakshitra. Maybe they won't want to fight. Therefore, he's asking Sanjay, what happened? What did they do there? So the background to the Bhagavad Gita is like this. It's a family dispute. The Originally, there was Dhritarashtra and Pandu and Vidura. And Vidura is born from the womb of a Sudra lady, so he has no claim to the throne. And Dhritarashtra, he was the first son. He was the eldest son conceived by Vyasa. And he was the eldest. He should have been the king, but because he was blind, he couldn't be the king. So, the throne went to Pandu. But Pandu died early. He had his problems and he left the world early. And so the throne came back to Dhritarashtra, although he's blind. So Dhritarashtra always regretted that his own sons couldn't be the kings. So when he became the king again, then he's very happy. And he wants that his sons should be the king. And they don't want to give any land at all to the Pandavas. So this is the problem, that the Pandavas are denied the right of being Kshatriyas because they have no land to rule. Remember the famous saint Duryodhan had said, we will not give you even enough land to go through the eye of a needle. And so they had that nature, the, son, the Kauravas, they didn't want to give anything for the Pandavas. And so therefore, they had no choice but to come to battle. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Dharma Kshetri, religious field, okay. An analogy is given there. We should make notes of the analogies as they come up. It's nice to know these different analogies and how Prabhupada uses them. In the very first purport, Prabhupada gives this analogy about the paddy field and how when you have a field of paddy, you have to pull out the unnecessary plants. So in the same way, in the religious field of Kurukshetra, unwanted plants like Dhritarashtra's son, Duryodhana, and others would be wiped out. So this is described in the very first verse, that Duryodhana and the Kauravas, they're all going to be wiped out they're, and they're compared to the uh, unnecessary plants which grow in the paddy field. Go ahead. Okay, Sanjay describes the scene at Kurukshetra. Now, Dhritarashtra is blind, but he was given a benediction by Vyas that he would be able to see the battlefield and he could see everything which would take place. But Dhritarashtra said, no, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, let, let Sanjay see. So Sanjay became the eyes of Dhritarashtra. Sanjay is the secretary. Dhritarashtra is in the palace at Hastinapur. He's not there at Kurukshetra. He's in the palace. 
So Sanjay describes to Dhritarashtra how Duryodhan uses his diplomacy to encourage both Drona and Bhishma. All right, so you can see here in the picture there's Sanjay and he's describing everything to Dhritarashtra by the grace of Vyasa. He has his, uh, he has his power to be able to see everything. Not only can he see what's taking place, he can see even the confidential things which are taking place. Even things which are done very discreetly, Sanjay will be able to see them and to describe them. He, will, he can even see what's taking place in the night. So he's given these amazing powers by the grace of the ants. So Bhagavad Gita then goes on to hear about, we hear Duryodhan because Dhritarashtra wanted to know what are they doing there? What's happening there on the, at Kurukshetra? So Sanjay is describing Duryodhan is using his diplomacy. Duryodhan is in charge. He's the head of the Kauravas. He's the oldest son of Dhritarashtra, most senior. And so he's, his job is like a coach of a, a team. And the coach has to encourage all the, 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 the big players. He has to, and on the big side of Duryodhan, he's got people like Drona and Bhishma. And he has to encourage these people that they're going to fight nicely. It's a problem because Drona was a guru and Drona will also have some partiality towards the Pandavas. Drona's best student was Arjuna. So Drona was certainly inclined. He had some inclination towards the Pandavas. And Bhishma also has some inclination towards the Pandavas. He also appreciates the Pandavas and has a liking for them. He doesn't like so much the Kauravas, but he's on the side of the Kauravas. So Duryodhan has to deal with them very carefully to encourage them. Go ahead. Next slide. All right. So, Duryodhan's diplomacy, Drupada Putrena, Drupad Putrena, right? Drupada, Maharaj Drupad, he is the enemy of Drona. Previously, long time ago, when they were children, Drupad and Drona were school friends. They were students in the Gurukula. And they were friends. But later on, they grew up. Dropada was a Kshatriya. He was a king. He had a palace and a kingdom. And Drona was a Brahmana. And Drona was very poor. He was so poor that he could not even get milk for his son. Drona's son, who remembers the name of Drona's son? Ashwatthama, right? Somebody listening? Good. Okay, so Drupada Putrena. <coughs> Drupada Putrena. The son, the son of Drona is Ashwatthama. Who is the son of Drupada? Krishna Dumna. right. So, and who was the guru of Drishta Dumna? Dronacharya. Right. Dronacharya. Right. So, Drona and Drupada are enemies. Oh, I was telling about Drona, how he did not have even money for milk. And he came to Drupada and he thought, Drupada is my friend, he will help me. But Drupada said, how can I be your friend? Friendship is only possible between equals. You're poor. And I'm rich. How can I be your friend? And he was disrespectful to Drona in this way. So then Drona went and he became the guru of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. 
and he trained them up and then he sent them to go and fight Drupada. And they went and they captured Drupada and they brought him and they put him at the feet of Drona. So Drona said, I'm taking away half your kingdom. So in this way they became enemies, Drona and Drupada. So Drupada then did a sacrifice to get somebody who would kill Drona. And he did a sacrifice and he got, who did he get from the sacrifice? Yes, Drishta Jumna and Draupadi, right. So they both appeared from the sacrifice of Maharaj Draupad. So Drishta Jumna, he became the student of Drona and he was trained in all the military arts. He studied with the Pandavas and the Kauravas. So whose side is Drishta Jumna on? Is he on the same side as Drona? No, it's on Pandava side. Yes, he's on the Pandava side. So, Duryodhan points out to Drupada that, look, there's that student of yours, the son of Drupada, and he knows this boy, what was the purpose of his birth? To kill Dronacharya. To kill Dronacharya, right. So, what does that tell us about Drona? What do you learn about Drona from that? If he took Drishta Jumna as his student? He's fulfilled his duties perfectly. Huh? He was uh, teaching, he taught students perfectly. He accepted him as his student. Yeah, he accepted him as a student. So what do, what do we learn about the nature of Dropada? You know, somebody's going to kill you. Are you. How are you going to deal with them? Are you going to take them in as your student? No. no. I don't think so. We certainly won't hesitate. We think, what, oh, this guy, he's going to kill me? And he wants to be my student? I'm going to train him to fight how to kill me? Yeah, we wouldn't want to take him as our student. But... Drona thinks what? What is his thinking? Why does he take him as his student? Maharaj Huh? Uh, he was a teacher. As a being Brahmana, he cannot reject somebody. Yes, that's the point. Good point. That's it. He's a Brahmana. He's a Brahmana and he's a teacher. It's his duty to give. He has knowledge, he should give it. He shouldn't think, oh, this guy's going to kill me. No, he doesn't think like that. He simply thinks, I'm a Brahmana. It's my duty to teach. Right? Okay, go ahead. Yagna Prabhu. Hare, Hare yeah? Krishna Maharaji, I have one question. Can I ask? Yes, please. So he said that uh, being a teacher, Dronachari, what duty was to teach uh, any of the disciples who came to him. But uh, in the same way, we see that uh, like Eklave came uh, to uh, to take teachings from him. Then why didn't he? Why did he neglect him? Yeah, because Ekal, you have to remember who is Ekalavya. Where is he coming from? And what's he going to do with the knowledge? So drunk, Drona considered that. Ekalavya came to get them, but Ekalavya was not a good person. That's why he didn't want to, he was, he was from the, you know, he was from a very, ultimately Ekalavya was killed by Krishna. So teacher also has some discrimination. He knows the thing, who is worthy of the knowledge and who can make proper use of the knowledge. So he didn't, he, 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 he was ca careful. This human was also going to use his knowledge given by his teacher in a wrong way, by killing him. No, it was just, it was the battle, Kurukshetra. They killed him in the battle at Kurukshetra. Okay, okay Maharaj. 
when took Kurukshetra was, you know, it was a Dharma Yud. It's not, Drona had come there to fight. You go to fight, you, have, you, you, go, you expect, you know, you're, either you're going to win or you're going to be killed. So it, it was, was not improper. Anyway, here's Prabhupada's quote about this. Prabhupada spoke about this, I'll just read. Dronacharya knew that Dropad Maharaj has got his son. In future, he will kill me. Right? Just a Jumna, his son. Still, when he was offered to become his disciple, to learn military art, he accepted, yes. That means the Brahmanas were so liberal. When he is coming as my disciple, never mind, he would kill me in future. That doesn't matter. But I must give him teaching. Yeah, remember Maharaj Draupada's son, just a, he's a Kshatriya. So he, the Brahmana's duty was to teach this knowledge to the Kshatriyas. He didn't want to give it to people like Ekalavya, who came from a different background and who was not going to make proper use of that skill, that knowledge. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, we hear in text four, we hear about Arjuna having special weapons and Bhima also making some very special vows. Arjuna's weapons, for example, he has a Gandiva bow. He has also a wonderful chariot given to him by the fire god and special horses for the chariot given to him by the Gandharva, Chitrarata. Uh, he has many other astras, different weapons which were given to him. And Bhima had made some very terrible vows at the time of the gambling match which took place. He had to witness Draupadi being insulted. So at that time he made vows that he would kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra. And not only would he kill all the sons, but he would rip open the heart of Dushashan and drink the blood. And he would use the blood to also wash the hair of Draupadi because he had touched the hair, he'd untied the hair of Draupadi. And so Draupadi had vowed that she would not tie up her hair again until she got the blood from that man to wash her hair. So Bhima vowed that he would bring the blood for her to wash her hair. So these were some of the, the vows which Bhima had made. And he kept them. He actually killed all the 100 sons of Dhritarashtra and sometimes Arjuna and others would have the opportunity to kill some of the sons of Dhritarashtra. They would refrain. They would leave him for Bhima to kill because he knew Bhima had made this vow. And Bhima also ripped off, he also broke the thigh of Duryodhan because Duryodhan had, had joked that he had said he slapped his thigh and said, this is just the right place for Draupadi to come and sit here. And so it was such an insult to a chaste married woman like Draupadi and in the presence of her husband, that when Bhima heard Duryodhan speak like that, he vowed that I will break that thigh of Duryodhan. And so we know at the end of the battle, Bhima fought with Duryodhan and at that time he broke the thigh of Duryodhan. All right, so this was the, the vows and the weapons. Go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so mentions here about the great warriors. Uh, this is very bad, your fonts are not working there. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande, right? Why do we mention the names of so many great warriors? Prabhupada says, people may ask, 
by mentioning these great fighters, what spiritual progress will we make? Sometimes people, when they begin reading the Bhagavad Gita, they get a bit put off with all these names, and they think, I don't know any of these people, I don't know these names, what are, who are all these? But Prabhupada explains, these are the names of great fighters, and because we are meant for chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, so by chanting the names of these great fighters, what do we gain? The question may be raised there. Go ahead. But the thing is that nirbandha krishna sambandhi, whenever there is connection with Krishna, that also becomes Krishna. So these warriors' names mentioned, we should not neglect. Krishna wanted to gather all the demonic power in that battlefield of Kurukshetra and kill them. That was his plan. So, understand these names, they're all in connection with Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was there on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and all of these kings, they're also there, all the Kshatriya kings. So, chanting their names, reciting their names, is all in relation with Krishna. Go ahead. So Duryodhan was speaking and he had to be very diplomatic. Another way in which he was diplomatic was he had both uh, Bhishma and Drona on his side. And they're both great generals. Drona was a guru and Bhishma was the commander of the forces. And so the question comes up, Duryodhan shows his diplomacy in dealing with them because he has to encourage them both. So whose name should he mention first? So he mentioned first the name of Drona, because he thought Drona is a Brahmana. So the Brahmana is given more respect than the Kshatriya. So he mentioned first the name of Drona and then Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma. He, he wants to encourage all of his, his soldiers, his great fighters, and he, he tells them about their strength. He also warned them about the dangers. As we heard, he was warning Dropada. He was warning Drona, rather, that remember Drona, that you have that disciple of yours on the other side, and he's born to kill you. So you have to be very careful. You're going to fight with them. You have to be careful. But Duryodhan says, we have great generals on our side. We had the side of Dr Duryodhan was full of many great generals. And he mentions the names. But still, there are signs of victory for the Pandavas. Now the Pandavas don't have such a powerful army as the Kauravas. So they have a difficult task. They're outnumbered. But there are some auspicious signs for the Pandavas. One sign is mentioned, verse 14, Madhava. Madhava means Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is present there on the side of the Pandavas. So that is very auspicious for the Pandavas. We know that Lord Krishna is a consort of the Goddess of Fortune. So because Lord Krishna is present there, so the Goddess of Fortune is also bestowing her blessings on Lord Krishna. So that's very auspicious for the Pandavas. Go ahead. Divya Shanka, the, the, the conch shell. The conch shell is a symbol of Vishnu. And when the Pandavas, when Lord Krishna and Arjuna blow their conch shells, there's a very wonderful sound and it shatters the hearts of the Kauravas. So the conch shell is the symbol of Lord Vishnu. The Kauravas, they also have their conch shells, but their conch shells don't pierce the hearts. But when Krishna and Arjuna blow their conch shells, it's 
it's directly mentioned how their hearts were shattered by the sound of the conch shell. Go ahead. The chariot from Agni, we mentioned Arjuna has a special chariot, indestructible chariot. And then the Kapidvija of Arjuna, the flag of Arjuna. And who is on Arjuna's flag? Hanuman. Hanuman, yes. Every, every different Kshatriya is recognized by their flag. Who is the symbol on their flag? And Arjuna had Hanuman on his flag. Why? Why does he have Hanuman on his flag? Do you know? Because uh, it was only Hanumanji who made uh, Lord Ram to win the battle when he was fighting with uh, Ravan. So in the same way, uh, here also uh, means uh, in, in place of uh, Lord Sri Ramchandra, Lord Sri Krishna is there and he is helping, uh, Hanuman, Hanumanji is helping Lord Krishna to win the battle of Kulukshetra. Yes, very good method. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Yes, signs of victory. Here you can see there's Madhava with the goddess of fortune. There's Lord Krishna and Arjuna blowing their divine conch shells. Here we have Arjuna's chariot and here's Hanuman on the flag of Arjuna. Actually, Bhishma had gone to collect some lotus flowers one time and when he was climbing the hill there was a monkey in his path. And he told the monkey to get out of the way. And the monkey said, no, it's okay, I'm not going to move. And he said, you move my tail for me. And so Bhima tried to move the tail of the monkey, he couldn't move it. And he was surprised. So he asked the monkey, who are you? And he said, I'm Hanuman. And so Hanuman and Bhima are like brothers, they're both sons of Vayu. Bhima was born from the semen of Vayu. And Hanuman is also the son of Vayu. So they, were, they embraced as brothers. And Hanuman gave the benediction to Bhima. He said, I will reside on Arjuna's flag, on his chariot. And whenever you roar, I will also roar. I will also be there. I will also be present with you. Okay, go ahead. I'm Prabhupada speaking about Vaishnavism. So in the fighting principle, Arjuna is fighting for Krishna. He is following the previous fighting Acharya, Hanumanji. Therefore, he has depicted his flag with Hanuman, that Hanumanji, Bajrangbali, kindly help me. This is Vaishnavism. I have come here to fight for Lord Krishna. You fought also for the Lord. Kindly help me. This is the idea. Kapi Dvija. Jai Hanumanji Ki Jai. All right, go ahead. Oh, oh, oh. Let me see. Where am I? So any activities of the Vaishnavas, they should always pray to the previous Acharya. Kindly help me, kindly. This is Vaishnava, is always thinking himself helpless, helpless, and begging help from the previous Acharya. So this is a very nice quote from Prabhupada. What should be our mood? that we're, we always think of ourselves as helpless and we pray to the previous acharyas, please help me. Whatever we can do, it is the mercy of the previous acharyas. We cannot take the credit for anything, we give the credit to the previous acharyas. It is their kindness and we have to pray, beg from the previous acharyas, kindly help. Go ahead. There is two missions, not only to give protection to the devotees, but also 
to kill the demons. So the devotees of Krishna should be trained up both ways. Not only to give protection to the devotees, to give them encouragement, but if need be, they should be prepared to kill the demons. That is Vaishnavism. So, of course, you know the famous verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinas Chaya Chaduskrita. Right? Lord Krishna comes to protect the devotees and to kill the demons. So, Prabhupada is also applying this that devotees should be trained up both ways to give protection to the devotees and encouragement, but they should also be prepared to deal with the demons. And he says to kill the demons. Go ahead. Okay, we have a group exercise. How many people have we got here this morning? Uh, 18, Maharaj. 18? Somebody taking the attendance? Yes, Maharaj, I'm taking. Okay. So, 18, I think we could have, what, three groups? Yeah, three groups, Maharaj. So we'll six put, each. Yeah, six each. So Prabhu will put you into three groups. You each be in a group of six people. And you can discuss together. First of all, ways this quote may be misused. Not, you don't need to give a lot of ways. Two or three is enough how this quote may be misused, and then what would be the consequences of this kind of misuse. And we want to hear the best examples. And then also discuss what is Prabhupada's real point here. So first of all, how this quote could be misused, and what would be the consequences of that. And then think about what's Prabhupada's real point here. All right? So, Yagna Prabhu will put you into groups of six people. They divide Nama. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Which quote is this? Are you asking? Yeah, but we'll go back to that. Prabhu, you have to go back to show the quote. Yes, here's the quote. Okay. Fine, Prabhu. Fine, Maharaja. Thank you. Yeah, Prabhupada's quote that we should be prepared to kill the demons. This is Vaish that is Vaishnavism. Okay, Maharaja. Got it. Everybody got it? Yeah? Go back to the questions, Yagna Prabhu. Yes? Okay. So each group you have to pick up, uh, make a representative and you can give a summary of your discussion. Shall I create the room now, now Maharaj? Yes, please, Prabhu. Yes.
ویژسته Pardon, please, Prabhu Ji. You, you are making a point just now. I didn't hear you there. Today I was saying like uh, we need to focus on the example for the court like uh, the Vaishnava should be given protection for the devotees and the demons should be killed. So we need to give the best example for this court. Yes, how can you misuse it, right? Like Yes. How can you, how mis can you mis misuse this in this court that we have to give protection to the devotees and I think kill the demons, like how people can misuse it in the name of religion, you can't do anything, so you can come up with some examples. Ah, oh, okay. I'll just keep going mind. Ah, maybe that's not your go ahead so when we say demons over here i think in kali yuga uh, our anarthas uh, are our demons so how we can kill the demons is how we can actually uh, basically how we can uh, slowly take bring out our anarthas or uh, vanquish our anarthas right mataji is that okay uh, Maharaj, uh, no what i was saying is sorry Prabhu. yes so the question is how this quote is being misused yeah, so I was saying that in Kali Yuga, it's not possible for us to uh, uh, differentiate. I mean, we are not qualified as ourself, ourselves to uh, uh, differentiate between demons or not. And it is not in our hand. It is, we have laws in place. So this can be misused. Yes. We cannot uh, label somebody as demons. Uh, one more point I can add from my side is that uh, we, this will create this will unnecessarily boost our false ego considering ourselves to be a devotee and considering other person to be a non-devotee or a karmi or a mayavadi whatever the call we will develop a judgmental of such misuse that you already told right i don't have yes, we can take like that uh, one may fall down from the path of devotion and service fall down from bhakti we can take like that yeah but you fall you miss somebody fell down from bhakti long before they misuse it so the consequences are different this consequences has to be thought in terms of larger context Hare Krishna Hare Krishna vital upheaval in the Vaishnava society upheaval can be a very consequence <laughs> No consequences in uh, Hare Krishna. Um, yes, Prabhuji. Yes, uh, consequences if if we misuse this word in terms of respond. In terms of respond, we'll be promoting. We won't be promoting Vaishnavism. So, 
इसकोन एज अ मीडियम Marash, how, how long do you want to keep the rooms? Yeah, but I think about maybe four more, four, four more minutes. Uh, you, are, you are muted, Marash. Oh, about four more minutes. Okay, okay Marash. Five, five minutes would be good. Hare Krishna, have you finished the discussion? We are discussing still, Maharaj. You're what? <coughs> we are still discussing. You st how, much, discussed the, how, how much more time you need? We are almost done. Almost, almost, almost done. Eh? Okay, good. Thank you. Kunti Marani, did she misuse the benediction that she got? I don't know. Is that misuse? Marani, you're confused. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So, it's very hard to think of misuse. What? So, misusing by like devotees, Vaishnavas, or by other like scriptural examples, Maharaj? Well, Maybe other scriptural yeah, examples. Yes, yeah, it could. Um, it could be other scriptural example. It could be either way. It could be devotees misuse. It could be yeah, different ways. How we become, you know, we think everybody's a demon. Anybody who's not a devotee, you know, who's a devotee and who's a demon? Mm. You know, that's a, a difficult thing to classify. What's the standard? 
who, uh, who makes the standard. And we saw Lord Chaitanya also was going to kill Jagai and Madhai, but Lord Nityananda said, no, in this age you have to be merciful. Yeah. So the demons can also become devotees. So we have to be very careful about how we understand these things. Can we look at what Prabhupada's point here in uh, this? Like Prabhupada also, like uh, all our demons in wherever he went, nobody was there trying to accept the Krishna consciousness movement. But he was too humble to make them accept the Krishna consciousness. So he converted all demons into um, devotees. Yes, Prabhupada converted the demons to devotees. Yeah, yeah in the Kali Yuga, the demon and the devotee are in the same body. <laughs> so, Maharaj, can we say Prabhupada's point here is that uh, the devotees should be prepared to do whatever is necessary to protect the other devotees or the, or the society? Well, yes, uh, th th definitely we should be prepared to follow the order of the spiritual master, but th at the same time we have to understand what is the purpose behind, you know, what is the spiritual master's intention? You know, to give an example, Prabhupada said everything in Vrindavan is prasadam. And so devotees started going to the sweet shops, they started taking all the, all the sweets without paying anything. They said it's prasadam. So you have to understand how to practically apply the instructions of the spiritual master. You don't want to be fanatical. You have to understand everything properly according to time and circumstances and place what is the proper way in which we can apply Prabhupada's instruction. So kill the demon. <laughs> Doesn't mean go around physically killing people. Is he employing uh, understanding the scripture or something of that sort? Killing the demon uh, by understanding, by knowledge? Yes, of course. You can kill the demonic mentality. Yeah. Slay the demonic mentality, I think. Anyway, you know, we have to have a discussion. Let's get everybody together. And okay, Yagna Prabhu, can we close up everything? Get it. Yagna Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Shall I close the room? Maharaj? Yeah, close the rooms now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is everyone back? As it will take uh, 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. Okay, everyone back now? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Everyone is there. All right. So we would like to hear from the, the, the three groups. Let's hear group number one. You have a spokesman. Who is the spokesman for group one? Uh, I'm Prabhu uh, Abhay Mahajan here. Yes. Okay, Prabhu. Uh, would, you, would you like yeah. to 
give us some of the thing, tell us what you discussed, and first of all, how these quotes can be abused, misused? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the misuse can be done in many ways, but uh, the majority misuse is actually if we identify the demons wrongly, so the wrong identification of demon is instead of identifying uh, a demon as a demon, we may identify devotee as a demon and then uh, apply this principle against him. So we need to have proper criteria to identify who is actually a demon. So that is one misuse. <clears throat> and uh, even if we identify a proper demon, then also we need to properly uh, employ the violence as sanctioned in the Shastra and not as per our whims and fancies. And not what? So, not as per the whims. Oh, not we just... should not employ the violence whimsically. Okay. Yes. There are some sanctioned principles in the Shastras. As per that, only we should try to uh, employ this uh, principle. Uh -huh. So these are the two misuses. And the consequences of this misuse is, is actually <clears throat> Uh, the mission of uh, the Hare Krishna movement may be compromised because uh, such misuse may uh, create a, a bad publicity or the bad reputation and the Prista image of devotees may get uh, a bad name and ultimately uh, compromising the mission. So that is one of the consequences okay all right and, and the real meaning uh, what Prabhupada mean by this principle is actually uh, we should not be cowards when time comes when there is a very great adversity in front of us we should not be cowards we have so many Vaishnava kings who fought uh, valiantly in face of the calamity so we should be like uh, those Vaishnava we should not run away from the battlefield but actually face the calamity and conquer it like Arjuna did. And the second thing is we also miss not only the external enemies but also the internal anarathas, the internal enemies, the six, the Shatripus, we should also try to conquer them. Because I think the real meaning uh, what Prabhupada... We should try to conquer what? Six things? The Shatripus, the six enemies. The oh, Moha Mother, Loha. Oh, 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 Kam Krod, Loha, Moha Mother. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Yes, let's hear from group number two. Hare Krishna, Kirtida Devadasi. So, answering the first point, we pointed out several um, things in this age of Kali Yuga. We are not qualified to make differences, to make distinguish between who are demons or not, between the demons and saints. And such way of thinking uh, increase, increases our false ego and it could lead, can lead uh, to committing violence. So the consequences of such misuses um, it could increase hatred in the society. So, um, the real point, Patra Prabhupada um, tried to, what Patra Prabhupada meant, uh, it was that the demons are all our anarchs and we should kill our anarchs and uh, get rid of them. And also, we should be fearless in terms of preaching. Do not hesitate. I should encourage devotees um, to continue to move forward. No. Thank, you, well, thank you very much. So we have to, the enemy is the Anartas. We have to get rid of the Anartas and at the same time we want to go forward and preach enthusiastically. Don't be afraid. Don't be cowardly. Okay. Thank you. Group number three. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dandvat Pranam. So like uh, for that, uh, how the court can be misused. So in this regard, uh, I would like to say like, uh, as we need to give protection to devotees and kill the demon. 
So everybody who is appearing in the outer sense with a tilak and kanthi mal and wearing dhoti and kurta, you can't presume as a Vaishnava. People may see the in, inside feelings of a person, how he is uh, uh, cooperating with us, how he is good in devotional service with others, engaging others. So like uh, this is the point, like uh, he may be a demon also, appear uh, from outside the appearance, it may appear as a Vaishnava, but inside he is a demon. So in this way, the this can be misused. Like a demon can uh, um, ask others to become away from the uh, guru parampa or something like that. So uh, from this, we need to protect the devotees. There should be unity with, in between all the devotees and should be based on guru, sadhu, and shastra. There should be conjunction between them. So they can so that they can be on the same path. There's no uh, divergence between the two, like a devotee and demon. From outside, they are looking the same, but from inside, one is a devotee, other is a demon. So in this way, it can be misused. Also, one more point, like uh, as the given in Shastas, all the uh, guidance and instructions. So um, people used to follow the guidance instructions with, which are uh, suitable to them and which they can follow easily, but neglecting others, which they can't follow. So it should not be there. The, here, this can be misused. Means according to the favorable conditions, people will follow the uh, instruction from Shastras, but all the instructions should be followed. And uh, coming to the consequences of the misuse, like people will lose faith in the Krishna conscious movement or Guru Parampara system. They will be pulled down from the devotional service. And like uh, people will break the four, four regulative principles uh, by misuse of it. And like one example, like uh, when Juhu temple was building, so the landowner was not uh, accepting to get the temple built on his land. So there was a fight while the construction was going on. So like they were demons and the who, whom devotees were protecting, they were devotees were protecting to stop the uh, to stop the fight uh, so that they can't destroy the construction of the temple where Radha Ras Bihari was residing. So they fought, they fought with them uh, with full courage. Uh, they have no fear even though the police was also there, so they fought with them. There were demons were misusing it. The land should not, they is their property, not the property of Lord. And like uh, for a few more examples, like uh, Prahlad Maharaj and Hirne Kashipu. Prahlad Maharaj was a full devotee and Hirne Kashipu was totally against Lord Vishnu. So uh, Hirne Kashipu used his power, austerity, his God from Brahmaji in a negative way to to destroy a great devotee like Prahlad Maharaj. But Prahlad Maharaj was so humble that till the last moment he was insisting his father to have faith on Lord that everything belongs to Lord. But he was not able to believe on his son's uh, 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 son saying that uh, God is everything. He, Hiranyakashipu think himself as a God. So at last he was killed because he was not uh, believing on a devotee. Another example like Jagai and Madhai also, as you also told Maharaji, like uh, Jagai and Madhai were against the uh, Nithyanam Prabhu go, go on for preaching for the Hare Krishna movement as per the instructions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But like uh, Jagai and Madhai, they were drunkard and uh, only uh, illicit persons. So they they used to attack on Nithyan Prabhu and then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got angry and he uh, Begin his chakra to kill Jagai. So, but uh, Nitin Prabhu requested, like in Kaliyug, you have taken the vow to not to use any uh, uh, equipment or instrument to kill somebody. Only Harinam will be the instrument to uh, engage the people in good good service to make them correct from make them come on the right path. Another example, like uh, once there was in Mayapur temple, there was attack. In, so nursing Bhagwan was installed. So there, there also devotees fought with full courage to prevent the temple and the devotees. So whenever there is such thing happens, so we should be uh, so brave to fight because we are fighting for the Lord, not ourselves. Our center of attraction is Lord Krishna. And like uh, our last for the Prabhupada's real point is like we should live together. As Prabhupada also said that like uh, your uh, Unity will be when I will when I go from the, this world. So your unity, you will represent me only when you live together and perform devotional service together. Then you can represent me. You should not fight with. They should not fight with God brothers or any 
uh, argument so we should live mutually mutual cooperation should be there as united we stand divided we fall <laughs> okay thank you very much prabhu very thank nice. you maharaj ji yeah all right so it's an interesting quote prabhu pat sometimes would say these kind of things right. you have to you know <laughs> the vote you should be killed You know, uh, one time a devotee, uh, this was in Hyderabad, just some Prabhupada Leela I'm telling you, in Hyderabad one time there was some problem with the rats, you know, the, the rats were coming and they were eating some of the things. And so there were, a devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I can put down some rat poison for them and kill them. And Prabhupada turned to the devotee and said, you should be killed. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, you should be killed. It didn't mean, you know, that somebody should go and kill that devotee, obviously. But Prabhupada said, we have to understand Prabhupada's purpose in pointing out this. And so I think, you, you, in general, you all did a good job. And you could understand nicely how this quote could easily be misused. Just like one time, another time in New Zealand, one time, in Prabhupada's time, uh, there was a, an incident. Somebody had put some bombs on a slaughterhouse. There was a big slaughterhouse and somebody had put some bomb there and caused some destruction there in the slaughterhouse. And there was some suggestion that maybe the Hare Krishnas did it because they preach against slaughtering. So, of course, we didn't do it, but Prabhupada was concerned that you know we should that we don't do these kind of things you know that's not our you know we do live by the law we follow the law <laughs> there was another devotee there was another a famous devotee from Prabhupada's time vishnu jana swami when he would drive the, drive the car when he would drive the bus he had a bus he would say oh we don't live by the laws of kamsa <laughs> so the laws of kamsa that's a different thing. Anyway, here we have to be realistic, we have to live in this world, we have to understand how to apply properly Prabhupada's quote. As many of you pointed out, we cannot really distinguish who's a devotee and who's a demon. And actually it's often said in the Kali Yuga, both the demon and the devotee reside in the same body. And so, how to apply this teaching? The, the, the mission is, as some of you mentioned, destroy the anarthas, destroy the demonic tendency which is there within the living entity, and to change the demons into devotees. Of course, if we get a repute, if, if we're involved in murders and so on, then it's very harmful for the reputation of our society. And we did see sometimes in the past there was some incident in one temple in America. And they had so much, they had a, so much controversy and so much bad news and bad publicity that they were put out from the society for some time to rectify their dealings. And later on then they came back to Iskon. And so what is Prabhupada's real point here? I, I like some of your points very nicely about uh, we, should be we should have courage, we should be bold, we should uh, go forward. And we should destroy the anartas, destroy the unwanted things, definitely. Very nice. Okay. So, any questions or com further comments before we go on? Point left. One more example was shared in the group, like Ashwatthama. He was a Brahman and he misused his power against the Pandavas and Lord Krishna's vanshar, means Pandavas vanshar that was coming. Brahma, he issued the Brahmas to kill the uh, Pandavas Vanshaj. Okay, yes, good example. Ashwatthama's abuse of the Brahmanical power. And yeah, there are many examples like that. Abuse of the Brahmanical power. And because of that, they lose the power. Okay, we'll go ahead. Yagna Prabhu, next slide. Prabhupada's quote, Generally, a Vaishnava is non-violent, just like Arjuna 
in the beginning he was non-violent. He said, Krishna, what is the use of this fighting? Let them enjoy. So by nature he was non-violent, but he was induced by Krishna to become violent. Your non-violence will not help. You become violent. You kill them. I want. <laughs> Prabhupada paraphrasing Lord Krishna's words. Go ahead, Yagna. So, if Krishna wants, we shall be prepared to become violent. So those who are devotees of Krishna, they should be trained up both ways. They should be prepared. But generally, there is no question of becoming violent unnecessarily. And we saw a good example of this when uh, there was a move to try to close down the Bhaktivedanta Manor in London. There was a move, some people wanted to close down the manor. They said, it's disturbing our village. We don't want this place here. All these Hindus coming to the temple here. We don't want it. We want to close it down. And so then the devotees had to fight. They had to fight. They had to make a lot of protests. They went to different courts and they were not able to get their voice heard properly. And then they had a big... Uh, protest. They organized different protest marches in the center of London. And eventually they managed to get hearing and they actually were able to keep the manor open and they arranged to have another entrance made to come into the land from another way. And in this way they satisfied people. So the devotees showed they, they fought. Not that they could just sit back and say, oh, Krishna will do everything. And at the same time, becoming violent, not that they became physically violent, but they used their, their strength as devotees, they used their intelligence to organize themselves so that they could go out and defeat these people who wanted to close down our temple. So that is proper use of violence. But generally, a devotee is non-violent. Huh. This is one of the qualities of one in knowledge. They won't use violence. They're very... Prabhupada writes, a devotee would hesitate even to kill a mosquito. So this is, this is the nature of a devotee. That generally, we don't want to kill any, anyone or anything, even a little insect. And we know the story, Magrari sweeping the insects out of the path. So that's a devotee, non-violence. But sometimes you may have to use violence when it's necessary. When there may be no alternative. And that was the case at Kurukshetra. They tried to stop everything. Lord Krishna was sent as a messenger even to give to... Uh, Dhritarashtra saying, let's settle this up without war, but no, there was no way, it was, not, it was not going to be settled peacefully. So there had to be Kurukshetra. So this is the, the point that sometimes we may have to be prepared to become violent on behalf of Krishna. So understanding these kind of statements, this is academic integrity. Go ahead. This is one of, the, one of our aims in studying the scriptures. The purpose of acad academic integrity is to ensure that students develop moral and academic integrity in the interpretation, evaluation and application of Shastric knowledge. So, understanding these kind of statements is very important for us. We have to develop the proper moral and academic integrity. Otherwise, we'll get serious problems, we'll go off track, we'll ruin everything. Go ahead. Okay, a statement from Bhagavad Gita. Sena yorubayor madje ratam stapad mae chuta 
Right? What's Arjuna saying? Let's have the English. O oh, infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see those present here. Text 21 and 22. Right? Please draw my chariot towards the two armies. Arjuna is speaking to Krishna. I want to see those present here. Go ahead. Oh, oh, we go back. Go back. Okay, we have a. We want you to to discuss this uh, statement here. Uh, we want you to consider what what is the significance. What significant points do you get from this statement? In pairs, take a partner. And you can just discuss what particular, what, how, do, how do you understand the significance of this particular remark made by Arjuna? I'll just give you a couple of minutes to discuss this. Maharaj, I'm still not getting what we have to do. I want you to discuss the significance of this statement. What, what do you understand from this statement that Arjuna is telling like this to Lord Krishna? There is special significance in this remark. Can you understand the significance, Arjuna speaking to Krishna? Is, uh, referred as the infallible one. So although um, he is the charioteer of Arjuna, he is still like he cannot be, you know, uh, any less of his position that he is. He's still going to be the supreme lord. Yes, so. that Krishna is a chuta. He's infallible. But what's what's the other point? Uh, but it, like even though he is um, over here, Arjuna is ordering him. He's still, you know, is 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 Arjuna's friend. But at this point, he's referring Krishna to be the infallible one, just to show us that even though he's giving orders, he's still going to be Arjuna. Right. Yes, Arjuna is giving orders to Krishna. Now Krishna is the supreme controller, right? He's Param Ishwara. He's a supreme, supreme controller, but here we see Arjuna giving instruction to Krishna. So, how does Krishna respond in that situation? Thank you, Harini. Um, he follows the orders and he takes Arjuna. Yeah. <laughs> Is he resentful? Is he spiteful? Is he, does he think, who is he to tell me what to do? No. Lord is Bhaktavatsal in the hands of devotees. Yes, right. Lord is Bhaktavatsal. Can you explain more? Uh, like, uh, he uh, means whatever devotee likes and whatever devotee wants, he makes them th the, all the things feasible. For him, uh -huh. for the devotee, fulfill all the desires of his devotee. Can you give some other another example how Lord is Bhakta Bhatsa? Uh, Tamra Lila. Yes. Yes, 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 Prabhu Maharaj. Right. What happened in Damodar Lila? 
Yashodam Reya wants to bind Lord Damodar. Uh, Damodar don't want to get bind. He, he start running. But seeing that Yashodam Bhai wants to bind him, the Lord uh, finally uh, allow him, allow her to bind himself. Yes. Lord Krishna takes pleasure in these dealings with his devotees. This is Krishna's enjoyment, becoming the servant of his devotees. Because they have pure love for Krishna, so Krishna reciprocates with them and he becomes their servant. So here we see Arjuna ordering Krishna in the battlefield. I want to see all those present. Let me see who is here. Right? Okay, so Lord Krishna is taking instructions from Arjuna and they're coming into the middle of the battlefield. Okay, go ahead Prabhu, Achuta. Okay, just to look over what we've covered today, we'll look at these different objectives. First of all, identified examples of Duryodhana's diplomacy with reference to Bhagavad Gita. Do you remember? What are some examples of Duryodhana's diplomacy? Who can tell me some? Yes? Kirtida? Kirtida Mataji, please. He's glorifying Drona Chari first, then Bhishma Deva. Is glorifying He's Dronacharya first before Bhishma Dev? Why? Because Dronacharya, uh, he was Brahmana. Right. And Brahmana was... Was... Okay, so that's one point. Another point, somebody else? Radhika um, Mahakupi Mataji. He points out uh, uh, how Dronacharya had uh, uh, trained. Uh, Drishta Dhumna, uh, although he was destined to kill him. Yeah. And uh, then he names all the uh, great personalities that are fighting on either side. Yes, right. He mentions their strengths and their weaknesses. Yes. Right? Dari Adona's side, they have some weaknesses. The weakness being that Drona had, Drona had trained all of these people. So he has some affection. And Bhishma also has affection for the other side. So this is a weakness on the side of the Kauravas. So Duryodhana is concerned about that. So he's trying to encourage them that they will fight with more enthusiasm, or even though they may be inclined to the Pandavas, but still they should fight. Okay, then we spoke about the liberal nature of Brahmanas with reference to Dronacharya. Right? What was that? A Brahmana always impart knowledge, whatever be the consequences. And so, Drona gave knowledge to? The student, knowing the student. that the student was born to kill him. Yes, right. Brahmanas are very generous. They will give anything for others. We have many examples in Srimad Bhagavatam. All right, then the relevance of Arjuna putting his Hanuman on his flag. What was the relevance? The, the victory is on the side of Arjuna because Krishna is uh, there on his side and Hanumanji was on the flag of the chariot of Arjuna. So, what's Arjuna's mood in having Hanuman on his flag? To get victory. So, what, what's he praying to Hanuman? How is he praying? Uh, as you protect... Uh, uh, as you help Lord Ramchandraji in his uh, in the war of against uh, Ra Ravan, in the same way uh, protect uh, us also and uh, make us win. Yes, Arjuna is praying to Hanuman that as you helped Lord Ram, so help me 
that I am fighting for Lord Krishna here. Lord Rama has come in the form of Lord Krishna and I am here and I am fighting on behalf of Lord Krishna, so kindly help me. Prabhupada speaks about getting the mercy, the blessings of the previous acharyas. So Hanuman was the acharya in fighting. So like this, Arjuna is praying to Hanuman, that kindly bless me. As you fought so nicely for Lord Ram, bless me that I can fight for Lord Krishna. Right? And then discussing the significance of Arjuna ordering Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Sena yor upayor maje ratams, like that, bring my chariot over here, that Lord Krishna is taking pleasure in being the servant of his devotee. Lord Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. Although Krishna is the supreme controller, he's come as the charioteer, the servant of Arjuna. And he's willing to take instructions from Arjuna. Go ahead. Right? Academic integrity. We discussed about the conception of misapplication of Prabhupada's statement regarding Vaishnavas and violence. We have to understand when we can use violence and we have to have also the proper regard for Vaishnavas, understanding who is devotee. Devotee is in everyone. Everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. So we offer our respects to all living entities. I was with Prabhupada one time in London. We went to a temple, a Hindu temple. They were worshipping Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And Prabhupada said there, he said, we not only offer our respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, he said, devotee of Krishna offers respects even to the tiny insect because the Lord is there in the heart of all living entities. So devotee is very, very careful about using violence. And Prabhupada gave the example, Arjuna was hesitant to fight, that he was very reluctant to fight. It was only because Lord Krishna ordered him, therefore he went into battle. All right, go ahead. Mood and mission. We identified aspects of Prabhupada's mood and mission revealed in the preface. Right? We have some of the aspects of Prabhupada's mood and mission. Things like uh, presenting the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Bhagavad Gita is the word of Krishna. And then how Bhagavad Gita Prabhupada's mission was also to, to authorize the activities of ISKCON, that people who accept the Bhagavad Gita, they should recognize that ISKCON is the bona fide society and it's showing people how to apply the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada established the ISKCON society based upon the Bhagavad Gita. And from the Bhagavad Gita also, we learn the Vaishnava philosophy. And by teaching the Bhagavad Gita, then people all around the world, they can learn what is the, what is the Vaishnava philosophy. That's the mission. And Prabhupada's mood in presenting that. First of all, compassion. Prabhupada was, he said, if even one person becomes a devotee, then I will consider my mission a success. So Prabhupada had so much compassion. Uh, he was also very humble. He, he doesn't take any credit for writing or presenting the Bhagavad Gita, but he says, I'm simply uh, a servant of my spiritual master passing on the instructions of the Guru. A Prabhupada's mission, a mood also shows his conviction, convic 
is convinced of the necessity, the great need of this Bhagavad Gita. It's so important, it's so, so necessary. Sometimes people think, oh, this is not important. But Prabhupada was convinced, this is so vital, it's so important. People have to get this knowledge, they have to get this message. So that was why Prabhupada was sacrificing everything. Whatever money, whatever time he had, it was all spent to write the books and publish the books, just so that people could get this benefit. So he was very convinced and he was also very uh, determined. And he didn't change anything, he didn't compromise, he didn't change anything. So he presents Bhagavad Gita as it is. So very important, these, these points are very important for all ISKCON devotees and for the function of the ISKCON society. That we're presenting the Bhagavad Gita, we're showing people how to apply the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. And we should also try to develop the qualities which Srila Prabhupada had, that same mood. When we go for preaching, not only when we go out for book distribution, but, but everywhere we should have that kind of mood. Like Prabhupada had compassion, humility and determined, like that. So these are some points. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Just a final quote here from Bhagavad Gita 1624. If one understands Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita and becomes situated in Krishna consciousness, engaging himself in devotional service, he has reached the highest perfection of knowledge offered by the Vedic literature. Okay, is there another slide there, Prabhu? Okay. If one adopts the principles enunciated in Bhagavad Gita, he can make his life perfect and make a permanent solution to all the problems of life. This is the sum and substance of the entire Bhagavad Gita. All right, so are there any final questions or comments? Anyone? Any questions or comments? Nobody? Devotees can raise their hand if they have some comment and questions. Okay, so then we'll meet tomorrow if there's no questions or comments. There's, there's oh, somebody's hand, hand, right? Amrita Gopi Mandaji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, uh, my question is, um, when Arjuna asks uh, Lord Krishna to take the chariot in the middle, I mean, close to the other side of the party, um, is, it, is it because Arjuna wanted to uh, look at them closer one last time before he began the war? Or can we say that can be a reason also? Uh, <laughs> one last time, well, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't quite know about that, but certainly he wanted to see exactly who, who were the enemy, who was, go who was on that side. He wanted to see who, which, who is he fighting against, who are, who's all come there to take part in the battle. He, he wants to see clearly these people. Uh, of course, uh, we see that when he actually saw Drona and Bhishma, then it uh, aroused his uh, feelings for them and it caused him to have some uh, sentimentality. He was thinking that maybe this is not right, these people are worthy of my worship. And anyway, Arjuna wanted to be sure that fighting the battle was actually the right thing to do. Then he wants to see who, is, who he's fighting against. He wants to make sure they're all the people who, are, who have come there with the intention of challenging 
the right of the Pandavas to rule. That's the real issue. Should the Pandavas be ruling? Should they have a kingdom? Certainly the Kauravas, they don't want to give anything. And therefore the war has come about. So Arjuna, want, he's come onto the battlefield and Lord Krishna is driving his chariot. He wants to see who he's fighting against. Just like we heard Duryodhan, Duryodhan was telling about who, who's going to be on the other side. He was telling his people who's on the other side. You know, you've got big, big men like Bhima and this Drista Jumna is there also, these kind of people. So Duryodhan had pointed out the threats on the side of the Pandavas. So Arjuna also, he's come into the battlefield. He wants to see who are these people on the other side. Who, who is he actually up against? You know who you're fighting against and it's a bit, a bit easier. If you don't know who you're fighting against, then you may wonder, why am I fighting at all? So you have, there has to be some anger there aroused within the person before they can actually fight. If you go on the battlefield feeling peaceful and thinking they're my friends, <laughs> you're not going to fight very well. It won't be a, much of a battle. So the idea is a Kshatriya, you have to see who's there, who are these people. And Arjuna, maybe the intention is that by seeing who he's fighting against, his anger will be aroused and he'll be more inclined to fight because he knows all the injustices which were done to them. So many injustices were done to the Pandavas. They'd been treated very cruelly. Their wife had been insulted. All their property had been taken from them. They'd been put in exile for 12 years. There's so many difficulties. They gave poison to Bhima and, oh my, and their house was set on fire. So many ways they tried to give trouble to the Pandavas. And so Arjuna, by seeing that these people are the ones who are on the other side, then his anger will be aroused. If, he's, if he'd seen Duryodhan, if he'd seen Duryodhan and if he'd seen uh, uh, Dushasan and these kind of people, then Arjuna may have had a very different intention. But it just happened that he didn't see them. He saw Bhishma and he saw Drona and it had a very different effect. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. So we'll meet tomorrow, seven o'clock, and I'll try to get my computer organized so that I can be functioning better. I'm sorry about the problem here this morning. Okay. So thank you very much for your tolerance. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada. Ki jai. Thank you so much.